Okay, now. If you were forced to participate in an alien sick game of who lives and who dies, what could you do? In this video on Nerd Explains, I'll tell you how to beat Circle. Very intimidating name, by the way. Circle. I'm gonna throw us onto one of the red circles and see how we fare. We don't have perfect knowledge and we don't know how this ends. We know what the characters know at the start. Can we beat this situation? Let's find out. For some reason, we wake up before everyone else. Maybe we're just more immune to alien tranquilizers. I don't know. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. I like you. But you're crazy. All we remember is running from alien ships before we blacked out and were tractor beamed into the ship. We're in a circular room with a bunch of strangers. There are red circles underneath everyone, arrows pointing to each person in a black half dome in the middle of the room. We can't really see the rest of the room because it's too dark. There isn't much to go off of at this point, it's probably best that we just hang out and see what happens. Everyone is still standing but asleep until a lady wakes up. She's pretty bewildered and tries to step off her red circle. And she gets a nice warning buzzer that would make Dennis Reynolds flinch. Hear this sound. And then... Thought we were done with the buzzer. Oh, only if you repeat an answer. Now, even you, in this round? Yes, even in this round. Yep. Mm -hmm. She tries to touch another person and the same thing happens. Another woman wakes up, freaks out, steps off her red circle, and the black thing in the middle of the room shocks her with a red energy beam dropping her to the floor unconscious. Now, it might be a non-lethal taser, but we get a good look at the lady who was beamed, and there's blood coming out of her eye. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I think that that means she's either dead or she coincidentally suffers from hemolacria like the Bond villain in Casino Royale. We're gonna go with her being dead, though. This is weird because the first woman tested these boundaries and wasn't killed. She was warned by the buzzer. The second woman to awake was killed immediately when she stepped off. Why was the first woman spared but not the second? I mean, it's possible that this alien thing only allotted the entire group one warning for breaking a rule of touching and moving. A loud buzzer goes off and wakes everyone up. A dude freaks out, starts to run, and gets blasted. I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that we need to keep our hands and feet inside the circle at all times. From what we can tell, there are 50 participants with sparse recollection of how and why they are at the circle, other than they were running from alien ships, of course. You have all races, ages, classes, disabilities, professions, pregnancy statuses, etc. I'd say it's too random to be random. Everyone here was probably chosen purposefully because they are distinct from others in some way. A beeping countdown sounds off and the plasma globe in the middle of the room kills another person, seemingly at random. There's no way this is random though. What's the point of it being random? We inevitably realize that our hands are changing what arrow is lit up on the floor and that closing our hands confirms our selection by evidence of a distinct beep noise. These arrows are pointing to other people. It's some sort of voting mechanism for who gets lasered next. We can only see and control our vote, so we don't know who other people are voting for. After two minutes pass, another person is zapped, the person with the most votes. It doesn't take a psychologist to realize that this situation will devolve into discrimination, tribalism, and manipulation. It's probably best we just stay quiet. Once people realize that their vote kills people, anything we say or do will be used against us people will look for any reason to take us out. Just like with the police, it's best we keep our mouths shut and not incriminate ourselves. This is not the time or place to go on a political or ideological rant as we'd probably just piss people off and make enemies. We should also avoid lying unless we have to. It's better to stay quiet than to lie, but if we're pressed, it's better to lie than to admit to something that damns us. If we did commit a crime in the past, and the cop in the room does try to get us targeted to save his own ass, just deny everything. Nobody can prove anything. It's got what she deserved. She shouldn't have fucked around on me, man. And stick to lies about opinions that nobody can disprove. If we have an unpopular opinion, just 
don't voice that shit. As we see in the movie, falsifying a marriage might sound like a decent idea. I mean, who would want to kill someone in front of their wife or husband? The problem is, is that it's a giant unmanageable lie. If anyone gets suspicious of us and questions the both of us, we'll easily get found out. Somebody just has to ask, what year did you both meet? And say it at the same time on the count of three, and we'll most likely answer differently. If we get found out for lying, our chances of being marked for death goes through the roof. Surviving this game is obviously going to be heavily dependent on carefully choosing the words that come out of our mouth, or whether we say anything at all. The group begins choosing who lives and who dies in order to buy them time to figure out what to do, starting with the elderly, two minutes a pop. People with perceived low value, or people that are at the last rungs of their life, will be the first to go. If you are elderly, look sickly, don't speak the common language, have criminal looking tattoos, your chances of surviving go way down. If you're a child or pregnant, your chances probably go up. We can't exactly control these things though. This alien energy orb in the middle of the room is killing another person every two minutes. At 50 people in the room, that gives us 100 minutes before everyone is dead. Not a lot of time. Maybe, if we can understand what's going on, the motivations behind this, a potential goal the aliens might have, we can find a way out of this in time. Other participants try to find out more info about each other in hopes that they can understand how things are related and why they are chosen. This part of the movie made me want to ram my head through a wall. Hi, I'm back. You were on the clock. Spit it the fuck out, Beth. I actually went to college to be an English major. University of Virginia, go Wahoos. Are you fucking kidding me? Go Wahoos? Oh, I have a dog. Uh, her name is Cludy, and she's a terrier mix. And I have two cats, JJ and Ricky. People are gonna die based on the time you take and the words you need to be carefully and quickly selecting, and you chose the most valueless mix of sounds to contribute. To go next. Oh, fuck. I'm not entirely sure nobody voted that round. The best thing we can do is to contribute something about our abduction, or about the rules of the game. We'd provide value, humanize ourselves, but we won't reveal anything personal that people can use against us. You know, like saying you know another person because you're cheating on your wife with them. We're, uh, co-workers. Neighbors. Affair. Got it. It's just like, why say that? Just keep that to yourself. Keeping quiet only helps us to avoid being aggressively targeted. The opposite is also true though. If we are quiet and unhelpful, we can be targeted because the group doesn't see that we're providing any contribution or value towards solving the problem. We need to humanize ourselves, or else we'll be easier to kill. If we are tied with somebody else, we're probably going to be less likely to be killed. Seeing the aesthetic of the room, the voting mechanism, it's pretty reasonable to assume that this is some form of game, experiment, or intelligently designed means of selection. I mean, why set up a situation like this if you were simply going to exterminate everyone? We can probably rule out the circle as a means of selection based on the randomness and lack of clarity around the rules. If people are killed based on the flip of a coin or because they happen to be the first person to break an obscure rule that nobody knew, how good can the selection be? I mean shit, even Jigsaw announced his rules up front. This also means that there is no strategy that needs to rely on merit or morals. If you thought sacrificing yourself was a possible way to win the game by showing that you won't devolve into indignity, it's most likely not. Later on, this is somewhat confirmed as we didn't see anyone beam up to heaven to smoke weed with James Franco for sacrificing themselves. Full on sacrifice for you, dog. Go to hell, big friend! Suck my dick! We can't really rule out this thing being an experiment, but it would suck as lab rats don't often regain their freedom. The other option is that this is some form of game. Regardless, we need to test the game or experiment to find out what the rules or parameters are. We need to make public suggestions to try new strategies that could help us understand how to beat the game. 
Again, this is when speaking up can make us valuable and humanize us more. Let's just quickly run through a myriad of potential strategies. What if nobody votes? All the voting lights lit up in a unique way indicating that everyone successfully didn't vote. Unfortunately, this didn't stop the killings. Someone at random was shocked at the end of the round. What about voting for an empty spot from a previously killed person? Nope, someone at random was killed again. What if everyone votes for themselves? You can't, it just automatically selects the next spot to your left or right. You can, however, step off your red circle to sacrifice yourself, if that's your thing. Doing so will reset the two minute countdown until someone is to be lasered again. What if everyone votes for the person to the right? Equal votes for everyone forcing an all participant tie. Well, we actually don't know what would happen. One guy defected and chose a pregnant woman instead of the person to his right. Another person saw this and voted for that guy, forcing a tie between the man and the pregnant woman. They revoted and killed the guy who defected, breaking the tie. It's fair to assume that if this strategy was successful, they'd all tie. And as we found out, if a tie occurs and is not broken, everyone tied will be killed. It's probably a good thing they didn't try this again. Based on our previous failed strategies and the rules we've discovered, the circle does allow for a scenario where one person can survive. If it comes down to two remaining people and one person does not vote while the other does vote, or if one person sacrifices themselves, the next round will consist of only one survivor. And since you cannot vote for yourself, and nobody can vote for you, the last person might not be killed. Sure, we could end up lasered even as the last remaining person, but it's a Pascal's Wager type situation where the only reasonable assumption and action to take is the one where we have a possibility of surviving. We can only assume that this is a last man standing type game. At this point, we might want to consider if we want to win or if we can live with ourselves if we do win. Most likely, at some point, we'll have to vote out and kill a child. And you thought Monopoly ruined families and friendships. But as they say, don't hate the player, hate the game. Let's say we want to win and be the sole survivor no matter the cost. In order to do that, the game needs to come down to two people at the end that won't tie each other. It's a type of prisoner's dilemma. If both people vote for each other, they both die. If nobody votes, it's a 50-50 that we die, which is still unpreferable. The only way that we can 100% survive is if the other person does not vote while we vote for them. But who would not vote? Well, a person that is inclined to sacrifice themselves, like Sean, or an elderly or sickly person. The problem is, is that they will most likely be voted out early on, so suggesting a voting direction that spares them won't work. What about someone that we can fool into not voting? The circle is similar to a game called So Long Sucker, where the only way to win is by eliminating other players through deceit and betrayal. Like in So Long Sucker, eliminating enemies is not as important as propping up gullible allies that you can betray more easily in the end game. This is true in the circle as well. In order to fool someone into not voting, that person has to be gullible enough to believe that we will sacrifice ourselves for them, and that they don't need to vote as we'll step off of our circle to be lasered voluntarily. Of course, we aren't going to sacrifice ourselves. As the countdown draws down, we distract them with some emotional last words and fake stepping off of our circle and then at the last second, we cast our vote for them, causing them to be killed off, leaving us as the sole survivor. But who would genuinely believe that we'd sacrifice ourselves for them? Well, it has to be a person that most people would not question sacrificing themselves for, like a pregnant woman or child. I know, I know, it's fucked up, but I already said that winning this game comes at a cost, and whether you're willing to pay it is up to you. I'm also not saying that pregnant women or children are inherently more gullible. I'm saying that they are gullible because it's normal and generally accepted that people should sacrifice themselves for children or pregnant women in a lifeboat scenario. To put it in perspective, it would be much harder to convince the discount version of Jordan Belfort that you'll sacrifice yourself for him. He has no reason to believe or trust you. Why on earth would someone sacrifice themselves for that person? 
They are arrogant, but they know it's against the norm for people to sacrifice for them. Hopefully I'm making sense here. They are gullible because it's a cultural norm for people to sacrifice themselves for them, and they are more likely to falsely trust you based on this. This game is as much about sociopathic charisma as anything. Once the game comes down to us and that other person, we have to turn the emotional knob up. We need to distract them by telling an earnest but untrue story about how we've lived a lot of life and that we're okay with her living so that the baby can have a chance at life too. Maybe a story about how we shouldn't be the survivor, as we've killed someone in a drunk driving accident a couple of years ago and that we're honestly not that great of a person. Like faking a come to Jesus moment where we're okay with letting go of life. Tell her she needs to promise to make the best of things and to make sure her kid gets a great life. Ask her what she's gonna name her kid. Just get her mind off of any need to vote. If it's a kid, do something similar. They have a lot of life to live. We've already lived enough and want to give them a chance. Yada yada. We're essentially reaffirming that they don't need to vote as we're gonna sacrifice ourselves for them. It also helps that earlier on we set the groundwork for this and earn their trust which I'll come back to in a bit. This sounds like a nifty plan, but how do we ensure that the game comes down to us and someone else we can fool into not voting? Suggest a voting direction that spares them. Most people would probably agree with us and nobody can paint us as being selfish and predatory. We also earn trust points with the child or pregnant woman that will be important once it comes down to them and us, like we talked about earlier. While there is likely to be conflict with this suggestion, it's our best bet at getting the majority to spare them. We absolutely do not want the game to come down to us and Sweater Vest. He will 100% vote for us and cause a tie, getting us both killed. Hopefully we've effectively swayed enough votes in favor of protecting the child or pregnant woman. There are still a lot of people left though, so how do we ensure that we make it to the final round? There are some important, all bet counterintuitive aspects of this so long sucker game that can be applied to the circle. Overtly trying to win is actually an effective way to lose. If we are found to have gamed, betrayed anyone, or have a strong potential to influence the direction of the game, we will be targeted as a predator that needs to be eliminated in order to level the playing field. This is why we don't want to assume any leadership positions. Just make light-handed suggestion. Trying to develop a super strategy that plans ahead of everyone's moves and outmaneuvers everyone is hopeless, given the complexity of the game. There are way too many interactions between people with dynamic mindsets and backgrounds. Too much of the game depends on randomness and unknown rules. We simply can't compute the possible plays of everyone. If we try, we're likely to get too aggressive or make a mistake that reveals us as trying to game everyone else. The next best thing to do is give others enough room to make mistakes, or more realistically, enough rope to hang themselves with. People will get aggressive, lash out, prey on others, say stupid things, and discriminate in order to save themselves. All of these things are likely to get the majority to vote for them next. Probably the best way to ensure we make it to the final round is just to stay quiet and reserved. Subtly influencing the group to spare the pregnant woman or child is the most important play. As the participants get whittled down, our leverage goes up. Once it's down to a handful of people, the pregnant woman or child, who hopefully trust us more than the others, will vote in our favor in order to eliminate anyone they think will be selfish. They know they need someone who is willing to let them live, so they need to keep us alive, and will help us vote out anyone else that will be viewed as more selfish. This gets us to the final round with them. So to recap, we've ensured our survival by staying relatively quiet, and we've ensured the survival of another person that thinks we'll sacrifice ourselves for them, and now we can hopefully distract them and deceive them enough to where they don't vote. Once the countdown draws down, we cast a last minute vote, killing them. And once we get returned to Earth, we will probably want to go see a therapist and get some antidepressant medication. But hey, we won. If you've seen the movie, this is pretty much what Eric does in order to win. And from what I can tell, it's the only way. It's by no means a surefire way to win. 
you still have a super low chance of winning despite all of these strategies and there are just too many dynamic variables and things out of your control. These people had 100 minutes to figure this out after being abducted, drugged, and chaotically forced into a life and death game. I'm almost certain I would die if placed in the same circumstances. I'm pretty sure I either overthought this or missed something completely. If you have a better suggestion for winning the death game in the circle, I'd love to hear about it, so please leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See you later.